What's amazing is that the achievement is supposed to be the pyramid above us that rises out of the desert floor. From hidden tombs and ancient artifacts to startling revelations about her reign and personal life, these discoveries about Cleopatra are set to change everything. In this video, we're looking at finds that challenge long-held beliefs and rewrite the narrative of this legendary ruler. Prepare to head out on a magic carpet ride that will forever change the way we perceive Cleopatra and her extraordinary legacy. These are 20 terrifying discoveries about Cleopatra that change everything. <sighs> Number 20, Geometric Miracle Tunnel. In 2022, archaeologists made a discovery underneath the Temple of Taposiris Magna in the ancient ruined city on the Egyptian coast. They found a vast tunnel, described by experts as a geometric miracle. The tunnel, located 43 feet below the ground, was an impressive 7 feet tall and stretched an astonishing 4,281 feet through sandstone. The design of the tunnel bears similarities to the Tunnel of Eupolinos, an aqueduct on the Greek island of Samos. This makes the Taposiris Magna Tunnel a rare feat of engineering. As parts of the tunnel are submerged in water, its exact purpose remains unknown. Kathleen Martinez and her team have been excavating Taposiris Magna since 2004. They're in search of Cleopatra's tomb, and believe that the tunnel could provide valuable clues. The temple was dedicated to the god Osiris and his queen, the god Isis, with whom Cleopatra had a strong association. Coins bearing Cleopatra and Alexander the Great's names, as well as figures of Isis have been discovered in the temple. Burial shafts containing Greco-Roman burials have also been found, suggesting that Cleopatra and her husband Mark Anthony may have been interred in similar tombs. Future exploration will focus on the nearby Mediterranean Sea. Part of the temple collapsed and was submerged by earthquakes between 320 and 1303 CE. Also, a network of tunnels extended from Lake Mariute to the Mediterranean were revealed in previous excavations. The search for Cleopatra's tomb and further revelations about the temple's mysteries continue. What secrets might the newly discovered tunnel underneath the temple of Taposiris Magna hold? Could it lead to the long-lost tombs of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony? Don't leave these mummies hanging! If you want to uncover more incredible discoveries, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Oh, and remember, mummies have a way of finding those who don't show their support, so don't get cursed, just hit the subscribe button now. Time for the rare topic. In a mysterious discovery, scientists in Egypt allegedly stumbled upon a giant crystal cube containing a mummy. That's right, these scientists in Egypt just announced that while looking for Cleopatra, they found an untouched miracle. The mysterious finding has left experts baffled, as the method of encasing a mummy inside the crystal remains completely unknown. It seems the government have shut this one down, so only limited information is available about this extraordinary finding. We only have this image to offer clues into the intriguing story. The crystal cube is massive, towering over the surrounding scientists who are studying it with fascination. The mummy inside appears to be well-preserved, adding to the enigma surrounding this artifact. How do you think the mummy came to be encased in a crystal cube? What secrets could this extraordinary discovery hold? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know what you think about what we just showed on screen. And with that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19, Cleopatra's Final Resting Place. The mystery surrounding the final resting place of Cleopatra continues to motivate historians and archaeologists. Speculations about her burial location range from Alexandria to the ancient temple of Taposiris Magna, as we already saw. But there is more to learn about this place. Recent excavations at Taposiris Magna have unveiled two mummies of high-status individuals who lived during Cleopatra's time. This discovery is considered sensational, Look at that, they're fabulous. 
as it emphasizes the significance of the necropolis associated with Cleopatra. Despite the poor state of preservation due to water damage, important evidence revealed that the mummies were originally covered in gold leaf. This was a luxurious adornment reserved only for the elite. Archaeologists say that these individuals may have had direct interactions with Cleopatra herself. The opening of the intact tomb at Taposiris Magna was documented for a Channel 5 documentary, The Hunt for Cleopatra's Tomb, presented by Dr. Glenn Godenhoe from Liverpool University. The mummies, x-rayed and determined to be male and female, may have served as priests involved in maintaining Pharaoh's power. Cleopatra was the last ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom. However, no tombs belonging to Ptolemaic pharaohs have ever been discovered to date. Dr. Kathleen Martinez remains confident that Cleopatra's tomb will be found within the vast unexplored sections of the site. Number 18. Truth About the Pyramids While the exact location of her burial site remains elusive, the discoveries made in Egypt by Dr. Martinez have brought researchers closer to unraveling the secrets of this ancient queen. The name Tap Osiris Magna translates to the Great Tomb of Osiris, reflecting the significance of the site as a place associated with the god of the afterlife. The temple complex at Tap Osiris Magna spans an area of around 55,000 square meters, making it one of the largest archaeological sites in Egypt. Taposiris Magna's potential connection to the legendary Queen Cleopatra has generated huge interest. It offers a possible look into the final resting place of one of the most iconic figures in ancient history. Also, the discovery of ancient texts and inscriptions at Taposiris Magna has provided insights into the religious practices and beliefs of ancient Egyptians during the Ptolemaic period. Number 17. Cleopatra Bathed in Donkey Milk no, that title was not an insult. It's true. Cleopatra's beauty regimen included some unconventional practices to maintain her appearance. One of the most famous beauty treatments associated with Cleopatra is her alleged bathing in donkey milk. Donkey milk was believed to have nourishing and rejuvenating properties for the skin. It was highly valued in ancient Egypt for its skincare benefits. Cleopatra's indulgence in donkey milk baths was a luxury reserved for the elite. It was said that she would bathe in a mixture of donkey milk and other luxurious ingredients like honey and essential oils. Along with using sour donkey milk for its lactic acid content, she also employed powdered crocodile excrement, although its effectiveness is doubtful, to say the least. Cleopatra had her own perfume factory, where she mixed herbs, flower petals, and seeds with hot vegetable oil to create perfumed oils. She even experimented with remedies for baldness, concocting a mixture of ground horse teeth and deer marrow. In her pursuit of alluring eyes, Cleopatra used green copper malachite and black lead sulfide as eye makeup. This not only enhanced her appearance, it also served as a fly repellent. Cleopatra's beauty secrets demonstrate her dedication to maintaining a youthful and alluring image. While some of her methods may seem unconventional or even straight up bizarre by today's standards, they show the extent to which she sought to enhance her natural beauty. Number 16. The Children of Cleopatra VII The children of Cleopatra faced mixed fates. Following the defeat of their parents by Octavian at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, things were not looking good for her offspring. Cleopatra and Mark Anthony's eldest son, Caesarion, who had hopes of following in his father's footsteps, was executed by Octavian just 11 days after his mother's death. Alexander Helios, their second son, was appointed King of Kings and engaged to Princess Iotapa of Medea Atropatine. Ptolemy Philadelphus, the youngest son, had an uncertain fate, with no information available on his military or political endeavors. Octavian took Cleopatra and Antony's children to Rome, parading them in golden chains as a symbol of his victory. However, their only daughter, Cleopatra Selene, had a different destiny. She was married to King Juba of Numidia in Rome, and they became prominent rulers in Mauritania, supported by Rome. Cleopatra Selene received a significant dowry from Augustus, solidifying her alliance with Rome. 
sent to Mauritania, Cleopatra Selene, and King Juba became influential figures in the region. They were known for their patronage of the arts, establishing a royal library in their capital city, and promoting Hellenistic culture. Cleopatra Selene and King Juba played a vital role in the Roman supervision of Mauritania, ensuring stability and Roman influence in the unorganized territory. Cleopatra Selene and King Juba's descendants would continue to rule over Mauritania for several generations, with their lineage intermingling with the Roman imperial family. The Mauritanian royal family became an integral part of the Roman Empire's ruling elite. Number 15. Cleopatra was not Egyptian. Cleopatra, famously known as the last queen of Egypt, was actually not Egyptian by birth. She was born in 69 BC to Ptolemy XII Olides, the Egyptian king and an unknown mother. Cleopatra belonged to the Ptolemaic dynasty, an ancient Greek ruling family that had taken control of Egypt in 305 BC. Despite ruling over Egypt, the Ptolemaic kingdom was centered in Alexandria, a predominantly Greek city. Cleopatra grew up speaking Koine Greek, although she learned to speak Egyptian as well, making her unique among her lineage in that respect. After her father's death in 51 BC, Cleopatra found herself in a dispute over the rightful heir to the Egyptian throne. Initially, she ruled alongside her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, and even married him to uphold Egyptian tradition. However, Ptolemy XIII desired sole rule, and tensions escalated, leading to a civil war as both siblings gathered supporters to claim the throne. In response, Cleopatra sought refuge in Roman-controlled Syria. This was the catalyst for her eventual meeting with Julius Caesar, and one of the most famous stories in all of history. Number 14. Cleopatra spoke nine languages. Cleopatra, often misrepresented as a seductress, was actually an incredible intelligent and multilingual individual. She received a comprehensive education from the leading scholars of the Hellenistic world and studied at the renowned Moseon in Alexandria, which housed the famous Library of Alexandria. Cleopatra excelled in various fields, including geography, history, astronomy, philosophy, international diplomacy, mathematics, alchemy, medicine, zoology, and economics. She was the only member of her dynasty who could speak ancient Egyptian and read hieroglyphics. She was proficient in her native ancient Greek and several other languages including Parthian, Jewish, Median, Trogodytean, Syrian, Ethiopian, and Arabic. Cleopatra's interest in the sciences extended to her writings on herbs and cosmology. Although her books were unfortunately lost in the fire that destroyed the Library of Alexandria in 391 AD, renowned physician Galen studied her works and was able to preserve some of her recipes. Cleopatra's influence on medicine can be seen through Galen's recommendations, including a special cream for hair growth. Despite the numerous challenges and threats she faced, Cleopatra's intelligence allowed her to outsmart her adversaries. Her impact on various fields, including sciences and medicine, was recognized even in the centuries following her. After Cleopatra's demise, Egypt became a Roman providence, marking the end of the penultimate Hellenistic state and the conclusion of an era that had persisted since the reign of Alexander the Great. Number 13. Cleopatra executed her sister. An archaeologist from Vienna claims to have found the bones of Cleopatra's sister, or half-sister, Arsinoe IV. However, the evidence linking the bones to Arsinoe is largely circumstantial, and a DNA test was unsuccessful due to contamination from the bones handling over the years. The Ptolemaic family, to which Cleopatra and Arsinoe belonged, had a history of power struggles. When Cleopatra's father died, she and her brother were appointed joint rulers, but her brother soon ousted her. Cleopatra aligned with Julius Caesar, while Arsinoe joined her brother's Egyptian army against Caesar and the Romans. Rome prevailed, and Arsinoe was taken captive and later by Cleopatra in 41 BC. Archaeologists excavated a structure called the Octagon in Ephesus, Turkey in 1901. In 1926, they discovered a burial chamber within it, containing the bones of a young woman, 
Hilke Thur, the archaeologist, argued that the tomb's date, location, and octagonal shape suggest it belonged to Arsinoe IV. She also suggested that the tomb was designed as an homage to Alexandria, Egypt's ancient capital, and the Great Lighthouse of Alexandria. However, the identification of the bones as Arsinoe's remains controversial, with debates over their age and the reconstructed face suggesting an African heritage. Number 12. Cleopatra's Secret Drinking Club Cleopatra was not only known for her strategic rule, but also for her love of parties. She created her own secret drinking club called the Inimitable Livers with her lover Mark Antony. The club's purpose was to honor the god Dionysus, but its main focus was on drinking and revelry. Cleopatra and Antony would host nightly feasts filled with debauchery and excessive alcohol consumption. They would also roam the streets of Alexandria in disguises, playing pranks on the locals. Cleopatra had a playful nature, and once pranked Antony by making a bet that she could spend an enormous sum of money on one single dinner. To fulfill her end of the bet, she dissolved a priceless pearl earring in a cup of strong vinegar and then drank the solution, to Antony's shock. Cleopatra's love for parties and her playful antics added to her mystique. Number 11. Cleopatra as Isis Aphrodite The black basalt statue of Cleopatra VII from Egypt depicts her as Isis Aphrodite, a representation often associated with Ptolemaic queens. Cleopatra, however, embraced this identity more enthusiastically than her predecessors. During her lifetime, she was regarded as the living embodiment of Isis, who was worshipped as Aphrodite, Venus, and Astarte in different parts of the Mediterranean. The statue is now housed in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia. It shows the fusion of Egyptian and Hellenistic art styles that characterized the Ptolemaic period. Cleopatra's portrayal as Isis Aphrodite demonstrates her mastery of political symbolism and her ability to connect with diverse cultures. By aligning herself with powerful and revered goddesses, Cleopatra sought to legitimize her rule and appeal to the beliefs and values of her subjects. This strategic image building was an integral part of her political strategy, and it contributed to her enduring reputation as an influential ruler. Number 10. Scientists have decoded the smell of Cleopatra's perfume. Scientists have recently made progress in decoding the smell of Cleopatra's perfume. This gives a real sensory experience of the ancient world. Archaeologists discovered a perfume factory outside of Mendez in 2012, containing perfume bottles and residue-filled amphorae. Researchers, including Egyptologists and a professor of Greek and Roman philosophy, used experimental archaeology to recreate the perfume. The process involved trial and error with ingredients like date oil, myrrh, cinnamon, and pine resin. The resulting fragrance was described as strong, spicy, faintly musty, and had a lingering quality. Known as Mendezian perfume, it was named after the city of Mendez where it originated and gained popularity among the Egyptian elite. The recipe for the perfume survived in ancient Greek and Roman writings. In a 2021 paper titled Awe de Cleopatra, researchers used classical sources and modern techniques like paleobotany to identify and recreate the scent. That Dioscorides says where, where it was in the Mendesian perfume. They found that a combination of variables produced a pleasant fragrance with a spicy base note of freshly ground myrrh and cinnamon, accompanied by sweetness. The scent remained potent for nearly two years, similar to Egyptian perfumes mentioned by ancient writer Theophrastus. The study of ancient perfumes not only provides insights into the oil factory world of the past, but it also tells us something about the sophistication of ancient civilizations. Cleopatra's use of perfume as part of her personal allure reflects the importance of scent in ancient societies, where fragrances were valued for their sensory appeal and symbolic significance. Number 9. Cleopatra married both of her brothers. Cleopatra married both of her adolescent brothers, as was customary in the royal family. She ascended to power at the age of 18, ruling jointly with her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII. But as we've seen, his wife's sister wasn't such a great spouse. She declared war on him and then ended up being executed. Cleopatra's second marriage was to her younger brother, Ptolemy XIV. 
This marriage was likely a strategic move to secure her position on the throne and gain Roman support. However, it's believed that Cleopatra had the more significant influence and power in the relationship. During her eventful life, Cleopatra entered into relationships with prominent figures. She became the mistress of Julius Caesar and bore him a son named Caesarion, also known as Ptolemy XIV. Later, she met and married Mark Antony, with whom she had a romantic and political alliance. Cleopatra's family tree is complex due to her intermarriage within the Ptolemaic dynasty. Her parents, Ptolemy XII and Cleopatra V, were children of the same father but different mothers. As a result, her family tree has fewer branches and some unknown connections. The repetition of names in her lineage can be traced back six generations. Number 8. Cleopatra Died by Snakebite Cleopatra's death, like her life, is shrouded in drama and uncertainty. Following their defeat in the Battle of Actium, Cleopatra and Mark Antony retreated to Alexandria. As the Roman army led by Octavian closed in on the city, Antony took his own life in desperation. Facing the eminent loss of her kingdom, Cleopatra took a dramatic course of action. On August 10, 30 BC, she allegedly committed by allowing a poisonous snake to bite her, along with her two handmaidens. However, historical evidence surrounding her death is scarce, leaving room for speculation and different theories. The most widely accepted theory is that Cleopatra died from a venomous snake bite, either from an asp or an Egyptian cobra. Both snakes held symbolic significance, with the asp representing royalty and the cobra associated with Cleopatra's favorite goddess, Isis. However, some historians argue that Cleopatra may have used a lethal herbal concoction or a toxic ointment, as suggested by the ancient historian Strabo. Others have proposed alternative theories, like Cleopatra ingesting a fatal mixture of hemlock, wolfsbane, and opium. The lack of eyewitness accounts and primary written records adds to the mystery surrounding Cleopatra's death. The main sources of information come from Octavian. who had a motive to eliminate Cleopatra as she posed a potential threat to his control over Egypt. Cleopatra's death marked the fall of ancient Egypt as an independent kingdom. Her story has inspired numerous works of literature, art, and film, solidifying her status as one of history's most iconic figures. Number 7. Caesarion after the fall of Alexandria to Octavian, Cleopatra and Caesar's son, Ptolemy Caesar, also known as Caesarion, was declared the ruler of Egypt. At just three years old, he ascended to the throne following the assassination of his father, Julius Caesar. Cleopatra intended to secure her position as a queen of Egypt through her son's rule. However, Caesarion's reign was short-lived. Following Cleopatra's suicide in 30 BC, he was captured and subsequently with the deaths of both mother and son, the Ptolemaic dynasty, which had governed Egypt since the time of Alexander the Great, came to an end. Caesarion's claim to being Julius Caesar's son was a subject of debate and political intrigue. While Cleopatra insisted that Caesar was the father, there were doubts among Roman political circles. His paternity and potential claim to the Roman throne were seen as a threat to Octavian, later known as Augustus. Number 6. She wasn't that beautiful. The notion that Cleopatra's power and influence were solely due to her exceptional beauty is a persistent myth. While it is true that Cleopatra's allure and charm played a role in her relationships and interactions, her historical significance and political power extend far beyond physical appearance. Ancient sources like Pliny the Elder and Cassius Dio have made references to Cleopatra's beauty, but these accounts often reflect personal biases or exaggerated portrayals. For instance, Pliny described her as a harlot queen, suggesting that her wealth and power stemmed from her alleged promiscuity with Mark Antony. Cassius Dio also emphasized her stunning beauty during her encounters with Julius Caesar and her participation in Mark Antony's funeral. However, the Greek philosopher Plutarch offered a more nuanced perspective. He noted that Cleopatra's youthfulness and beauty were not exceptional compared to Octavia, the sister of Octavian and Antony's reluctant wife. Plutarch emphasized that Cleopatra's allure lied in her irresistible presence, persuasive character, and intellect. 
Ultimately, Cleopatra's historical significance goes far beyond her physical appearance. Her intellect, charisma, and political acumen were instrumental in forging alliances and navigating the complex power dynamics of her time. Number 5. Cleopatra the Great The story of Cleopatra being rolled up in a rug and smuggled into Julius Caesar's presence is a popular tale in history and literature, but its historical accuracy is uncertain. According to the ancient historian Plutarch, Cleopatra came up with a daring plan to gain an audience with Julius Caesar. She allegedly had herself wrapped up in a rolled up rug and smuggled into Caesar's quarters. When the rug was unrolled before Caesar, Cleopatra emerged, stunning him with her beauty and charm. But it's worth noting that Plutarch wrote about Cleopatra's life almost a century after the events took place, so his account might have been influenced by myth and legend. There are no contemporary accounts or other historical evidence to confirm or refute the rug story. The rug story, even if fictionalized, symbolizes Cleopatra's resourcefulness, intelligence, and determination to secure her position and forge alliances with powerful figures like Caesar. The image of Cleopatra rolled up in a rug has captured the imagination of artists, writers, and filmmakers throughout history. It's become an iconic representation of her seductive and cunning character. Number 4. Cleopatra Selene II was crowned ruler of Cyrenaica and Libya. After the death of her mother, Cleopatra Selene II, the daughter of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, found herself in a position of power. She was crowned as the ruler of Cyrenaica and Libya, territories that were part of the Ptolemaic Kingdom. During her reign as Queen of Mauritania, which lasted approximately 20 years, Cleopatra Selene II embraced her responsibilities with enthusiasm. She oversaw the construction of temples, lighthouses, and palaces in the Roman style, attracting influential figures from various parts of the empire. Despite being a foreign bride, Cleopatra Selene II brought with her an impressive collection of royal titles that she had acquired throughout her life. As queen, she refused to fade into the background and actively exerted her influence over her new kingdom. Coins were minted during her reign, featuring her face and titles alongside those depicting the king. She also named her son Ptolemy, after her own prestigious lineage, ensuring the continuation of the Ptolemaic legacy in Mauritania. Her son Ptolemy succeeded his father as the ruler of Mauritania after his death, maintaining the dynasty established by Cleopatra Selene II. Number 3. Muro of Cleopatra and Caesarion as Venus and Cupid This mural, dating back to the mid-first century BCE, shows a statue of Venus and the infant Cupid within the temple of the Venus Genetrix in Rome. The statue is believed to represent the famous gilded statue of Cleopatra VII as Venus that was unveiled by Julius Caesar during the temple's dedication in 46 BCE. Notably, the depiction of Caesarion, the son of Cleopatra and Caesar, in the mural would have been contentious following Cleopatra's defeat by Octavian in the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE. While Octavian spared Cleopatra's statues, Caesarion remained a sensitive subject, leading the owner of the mural to conceal it behind a brick wall. The representation of Cleopatra as Venus in this mural reflects the association between the Egyptian queen and the goddess of love and beauty. Number 2. Cleopatra led a fleet in a naval battle The uneasy truce between Antony and Octavian did not last long. Cleopatra was a big factor in their deteriorating alliance. Antony's infatuation with Cleopatra and his decision to form an alliance with her raised grave concerns among the Roman elite. In 32 BC, war broke out between Octavian and Antony. The naval battle of Actium, fought near the west coast of Greece, marked a turning point, and it's one of the most famous battles in history. Cleopatra, commanding her own fleet, actively participated in the battle alongside Antony. However, the outcome was disastrous for their forces. Antony's questionable tactics, including abandoning the battle to pursue Cleopatra's ship, contributed to their defeat. The Roman fleet was defeated by Octavian's forces, leading to the downfall of Antony and Cleopatra. 
The Battle of Actium not only sealed the fate of Antony and Cleopatra, but also solidified Octavian's position as the sole ruler of Rome. Following their defeat, Antony and Cleopatra fled to Egypt, where they ultimately met their tragic end. This battle is often considered a pivotal moment in Roman history, as it marked the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire under the reign of Octavian, who later took the name Augustus Caesar. Number 1. 128 Ancient Coins That Show Her Face During her reign, Cleopatra issued a total of 128 ancient coins that featured her face. These coins were minted in Alexandria, Egypt, between 50 and 40 BC, when Cleopatra was in her 20s. Each coin is unique because the minting process was done manually. Another group of coins was minted in Petrae, Greece, during Cleopatra and Antony's stay there in 32-31 BC. Although officially minted by Antony, one side of the coin depicts Cleopatra with the Greek inscription Queen Cleopatra, while the other side showcases the headdress of the Egyptian goddess Isis, whom Cleopatra identified with. There is a third group of coins where Cleopatra appears alone, but she did not issue them herself. After Antony gave her territories like Syria and Phoenicia, these nations struck coins to honor their new queen. Since they likely hadn't seen her in person, they used statues or other coins as references to depict her likeness. The final group of coins was minted by Antony. On these coins, Cleopatra is depicted on one side while Antony appears on the other. Notably, Cleopatra's features were altered to resemble Antony's. This practice was common among royalty to present a united front, in this case, between Rome and Egypt. What fascinated you the most about these discoveries? And what new perspectives do they offer on Cleopatra's powerful reign? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.